this is so fucked up because this does not look like a mall rat screening, man. Yeah! The last time I attended a public screening of mall rats is when the movie came out. It was me and four other people in the theater. So this is fucking tremendous. Um, <laughs> Honestly, I cannot tell you how much this means to me. Um, and I'll tell you a quick story about why it means so much to me. Uh, I was at the San Diego Comic Con a few weeks ago. Every year in a Hall H, big 6,500 seater, I usually do a Q&A where I just sit there and talk about shit. This year, they were like, you're following Star Wars. And I was like, holy shit, I fucking love Star Wars, man. But like following Star Wars, Will anyone remember I was even fucking there? Like, I'm gonna have to light myself on fire to fucking be remembered. And they're like, no, don't worry about it, I'll be fine. So we went to the panel, I stood in the back during the Star Wars panel, it was fucking astounding, man. It was like watching my childhood come to life. Not only was Lawrence Kasdan up there, the guy that wrote Empire Strikes Back, but then they brought up the entire J.J. Abrams, of course, Kathy Kennedy, the entire new cast of, of The Force Awakens, and then they brought up what they call the legacy cast. They brought up Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, and Mark Hamill. Chewie was sitting in the audience. Peter Mayhew was sitting in the audience. And I was leaning in the back, backstage, watching the panel. They have it on screens and stuff. I could see everybody who was going out on the panel. I saw Mark and Carrie and Harrison Ford. I could have thrown a rolled up tissue at them. They were so fucking close. And Harrison Ford, I probably would have hurt. And. Um, and I wanted to go over and say hi to Carrie and Mark because I worked with them and stuff, but they were so pre-game because they'd never been in front of like a crowd, like all eight, 6,500 people. So they were watching the monitor and they looked real nervous and I didn't want to go over and be like, hey, remember Silent Bob? So I just stayed, <laughs> stayed in the fucking back. So I'm watching the panel, loving it and stuff. And then uh, at the tail end of the panel, Chris Hardwick, the Nerdist, was the host. He says to me, yes. He says to JJ, he goes, um, JJ, do you have one more thing you want to say to the crowd? And JJ goes, how many people here love the music of Star Wars? And the crowd was like, Wah! and then he was like, how many people would like to go to a Star Wars concert right now? And the whole audience was like, Wah! including me. I was like, I'd like to go to a Star Wars concert. And they were like, well, tell you what, we're going to have one right now. And, and I'm sitting there going, well, there's no way they can let 6,500 people go. So I'm sure there's only like 1,000 going to go. And the rest will sit around and bitch about fucking Star Wars or something like that. And instead, they were like, everybody in the audience can go. Um, it's just outside. Just remain orderly. All 6,500 people could go. We're gonna give you these sweet badges. You'll get a, a plastic lightsaber when you get there. And we're gonna watch a Star Wars concert outside. And you have never seen 6,500 people exit a building more orderly in your life. And they just filed out, man. Just like going out, going out. And I'm sitting in the back like, holy shit, man. Nobody's gonna be here at all. I was worried they wouldn't remember me. They already fucking forgot me and shit. <laughs> They're going to see Star Wars. And J.J. comes off the stage, and I see somebody beeline right up to him. And then they, like, whisper at him. And I see J.J. go like this. And then he sees me, and I wave from the back. And he comes over. He's like, oh, my God, dude, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. They didn't tell me there was somebody after us. He's like, if I knew any panel was after us, I wouldn't have done it, let alone for somebody like you. I fucking love you. And I was like, yeah, I feel the love tonight. And he goes, I feel like Darth Vader, man. I was like, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. So you go have your concert, man. Let's take a picture, because I want to memorialize the worst moment in my life. And we took a picture. And then he went off, and the place was empty. So I'm sitting in the backstage going, like, if, if you have a panel and nobody's there, did it happen? And, and contemplating what to do and shit, thought about canceling the show, was trying to find out, can anybody come to my show? We just go watch the fucking Star Wars concert? Because I would like a free lightsaber. And uh, they were like, you got people outside, so you gotta do a show. So I'm standing in the back, and this story's a little bit relevant to, to New York. I'm standing in the fucking backstage at Hall H, man, feeling like, as usual, an utter fucking failure. The Charlie Brown of independent film. So. Leaning against the wall going like, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do here. And then somebody walks up to me, a man, and he kind of looks familiar, but I'm fucking in a haze of panic right now. 
And the dude goes, Kevin, I'm Bobby Moynihan. I'm from Saturday Night Live. And I'm a huge Saturday Night Live fan, and I really like Bobby Moynihan, and been watching his career all this time, because I'm like, if anyone's ever gonna play me on Saturday Night Live, it's that motherfucker right there. So when he came over, I was like, oh my God, how are you, man? And he's like, good. I was like, listen, I would love to talk to you so much right now, but like some weird shit just happened to me. So like, I, I, I can't focus right now. I'm really sorry. He's like, no, no, don't worry about it, man. Nice meeting you. And he walked away and then the panel happened. 2,500 people there, which was fucking nice. That's like a crowd like this and shit. And so we wound up doing the show. It, it was fun, it all worked out. Sith happens, whatever the fuck. So there was this moment, man, like, you know, we were, I, I talked to my kid all the time. I got a 16 year old kid named Harley. Always tell her the story about when I was a kid, I wanted to write for Saturday Night Live desperately. It's the only thing I really wanted to do. And I went to college at the new school for social research at U Eugene Lang, it was called. And I used to walk up to Midtown and sit in 30 Rock in the lobby and wait to be discovered. <laughs> not doing anything. Not busking or telling jokes, just fucking sitting there going, Lauren will know. <laughs> and I would do it so often and I would never, nobody ever discovered me and shit. And like it was the Schwab's uh, fucking uh, counter or something. And I would get sad. I remember crying, like being in the, in the lobby of 30 Rock going like, man, why won't this happen and shit. And that's no way to get hired on a comedy show, crying in the lobby. So I would tell my kid that story all the time, like, hey man, like sometimes, like if you're passionate about something, you wind up crying in the lobby of fucking 30 Rock, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> my kid's a big SNL fan, so I'm at the airport with the kid coming out for this trip here. And I'm going through security after them. They went through my wife.